Well, we've uh, had two, you know, pretty good days of practice, and really, um, players have worked hard. And I think that everybody needs to understand the importance of um, when you play on the road, paying att attention to detail, staying focused, not being affected by external factors. It takes a little maturity, uh, leadership of older players affecting younger players to do the same, and. Um, very positive in how you got to approach uh, what you do when you play on the road. Um, you know, their team is probably one of the um, tougher, direct, downhill, running, two back. We haven't seen that this year. Uh, they're physical, they don't make a lot of mistakes, and you got to beat them. And defensively, they play the same way. They don't make a lot of mistakes. They play a lot of guys up in the box. They're pretty good in block protection and um, play a lot of man-to-man -man type of stuff. And receivers got to be able to get away from them. And uh, they've done a really nice job on special teams. They've got two really good skill guys, one good punt returner and a very, very good kickoff return guy. So a lot of challenges on special, special teams as well. Um, for our team, you know, we've given lots of guys opportunities, you know, this week at linebacker, and we'll continue to do that. And we really don't have anything specific to report right now. Um, obviously, Corey Reamer's got the most experience and uh, probably the most knowledge, you know, at this point uh, to be able to go in and play that position. And um, But that decision has not been made. Uh, however, you know, Dante's surgery went well. Um, talk to Doc about it and he thinks that uh, he'll have a full recovery um, and Nick Gentry has the flu and he's had it for a couple of days and missed a couple of days of practice um, so that's really pretty much it right now for the injuries Well, we actually played, you know, two thirds of the game last week with the guys in those positions, and um, you know, we. And to me, that's harder to do than when you get all the reps, because you know, if a guy gets all the reps in practice, he's much more prepared to do it in a game. I mean, Reamer had, you know, very few reps playing inside linebacker. I had a few reps playing nickel. Uh, because of his other roles that he plays on the team, and that's what he's practicing. Um, but we always discuss before the game how we would, if something happened to certain players, who would play and what we would do. Um, and the players know that, and they're prepared for it. And um, so there was no question about what we would do in a game. And it's probably the best thing for us to do right now in the short term, uh, to continue to do it that way. So... I, I, that's my feeling, but that's not that decision has not been made yet. Uh, before we heard about Nick, we hadn't heard much about the uh, the flu recently. Had it started the trial off with the team? Well, we got one guy that has it. I don't know if it has it, been an issue. Uh, in the yeah, we, we, it seemed to have gone away. You know, pretty good. Uh, we didn't have many guys sick last week. Um, Drew Davis was a little bit sick, but he really didn't have the flu. We've had a couple of guys that get the re upper respiratory part of it without a fever, but they kind of come back a little more quickly and respond better to medication. But when the guys get the flu, they're usually about three days. So I, I thought we were kind of over that, but I, I think I was being a little too optimistic. Coach, this is uh, kind of off subject, but it seems like every game I've been watching this year, Alabama and others, there's a lot of helmets that are coming off players. Any theories why? No, I know it's the same thing. Uh, I think I think there probably ought to be something done relative to some investigation relative to player safety. Um, and I think there's a lot of people that look into those types of things, whether it's rules or equipment for player safety, and I certainly think that is an issue that should be addressed because I see it happening a lot as well. Coach, obviously you saw something you liked out of Nico Johnson to have, have played him to this point. How has he progressed so far? And 
would it be an option to move somebody possibly from Mike to Will like a Chris Jordan if that if that was needed? Well, we didn't do that. Um, so it's always an option. But we really didn't do that. And Nico has played Mike and Will, which for a young guy probably is a, a little bit of a burden. Um, so, but... You know, those guys are young guys, and they're learning, and they make mistakes every day. But as long as they're making progress, we're pleased and happy with their progress. And I think that's the biggest thing right now is could they go in and execute well enough knowledge-wise to be able to get it done. I think they're all going to be good football players, but um, I think they got to be ready to play. And we played a freshman linebacker two years in a row. I mean, Roe played when he was a freshman. Dante played all year last year when he was a freshman. So it's not that um, – we wouldn't play a freshman. That's not, but but those guys kind of got it and they were ready to play, and really don't want to play guys if they're not confident in what they're supposed to do and how to do it and get enough reps at doing it. And um, we, we need to continue to bring those guys along. Uh, Coach Saban, there's a term I guess called a trap game. The implication being that. Some sort of circumstances, place on the schedule, site, uh, external factors that can affect the outcome of a game. Do you have any feelings about that being true or subscribe well, I don't to even it? know what you're talking about. You're talking Never about heard of a trap game? game? Never heard of a trap game. What, explain it to me and I'll give you my I feelings think I, on it. No, that, <laughs> I think it's a TV, maybe TV announcer made up name, but I think the, the way I get it is the implication being that a stronger team can find itself in a situation that uh, playing a game, a game in which it's ex expected to win expectations, <laughs> but that the circumstances can make it a difficult game for them to win. But yeah. you've never heard of it, then it doesn't no. mean anything. <laughs> but, you know, I, I really think that you control what you do. And I think our players control what they do. So if we're in a trap game, it's because our heads in a trap and we're putting it in a trap and we're not performing well we don't prepare well we're not ready to play um, mentally emotionally don't have the intensity the sense of urgency the discipline to execute you know sort of the mental energy you need to, to be a good competitor um, and that's when other people can take advantage of you and I think that there's probably nobody that we play that could could beat us everybody that we play could beat us and on the other hand there's nobody that we play that could beat us just depending on us so you, you know I think that um, I, I guess what you're talking about is it's like the analogy I use when you used to play at Notre Dame you know the Gipper talks to the team the night before so therefore you're supposed to lose if they wear their green jerseys, you're supposed to lose. If, you know, touchdown Jesus is doing so, you know, feels a certain way, you're supposed to lose. But that only affects you if it affects you, if you think that. You know, we won a few games at Notre Dame, so that didn't really affect us. Is that what you're talking about, trap game? So if I went and told the players this is a trap game and they started believing it was a trap game, then we'd be in a trap. But I'd rather them believe that if they go do what they're supposed to do, they'll have the best chance to be successful. And that just didn't start when you show up for the game. That starts when you practice every day, when you prepare. Um, and, and I think that consistency is one of the most difficult things to do from a human nature standpoint. And um, I think it takes something special to be able to do that. And it's a challenge to get it done with your team every week. But that's our challenge, and that's what we try to do. When you were at LSU, you were on the NCAA Rules Committee. How much was tweaking the blocking below the waist rule discussed then, and are you a proponent for tweaking it now? Well, I, I think that uh, you know there's always been a lot of discussion about cut blocking. Um, we have a cut block rule, but it only really 
uh, affects a guy if he's engaged with another player and then gets cut, which is extremely dangerous. Um, I, th I think, you know, I have mixed emotions about it. Um, cut blocking has been a part of the game for a long time. Um, a lot of players get hurt because of cut blocking. I don't think there's any question about that. But I also feel that every player has a responsibility to play the cut blocks. You know, you need to coach and play the blocks properly so that you minimize your chances of being injured by getting cut. And it's always my opinion, and I tell the players this, that when a guy cuts you and he's in front of you and you can see him, that should never be an issue because you should address and play that block in a certain way. And that was the situation.